Hey, this is Glendon, and I got a very curious email on my other channel where I talk mostly business. And someone's like, You're in your fancy vehicle in your fancy neighborhood with the white people. That was how it started. And I, I didn't respond because it's fuckery. And that's, you know, this is going to be some fuckery for you on this channel. And I was like, with the white people. I just passed a school bus full of Mexicans in my neighborhood. So, this neighborhood is everything. I'm talking from Indian on up to, there's probably a Martian in someone's basement. Maybe even someone from Pluto or Saturn. But the email made me laugh because it brings up a really good point. Why I don't live in the hood. Years ago, I was working for LabCorp, and this was during my kind of scrub bum days. Wasn't doing that well financially. I was living in the hood. I was um, going through a really hard time. And I was coming home one night, and this car, 1968 tricked out Impala, never forget it, black. It passes me. And these guys start screaming at me. It's like, you think you better. And those scrubs. You think you better than us, don't you? I mean, they were just going on and on with some stuff. I don't know who the fuck they were. Never saw them. And then I didn't say anything. I was tired. I was coming home from work. I just kept walking. Didn't say nothing. Then the car stops you know cuz they had music in there they, they were smoking weed I could smell the weed the weed hit me before the car got to me because they were driving kinda of slow so I don't hear the car proceeding I look back the car has stopped and the reverse lights come on and something cosmically says run I mean, seriously, it wasn't a kind of a, it wasn't weak. It was a very strong, you need to get the book. You need to start running. So me being who I was, I listened and took off. This was over in the West End, close to the Wren's Nest. And there was a subdivision that, let's say the townhomes. So I hit the corner and there's this metal Iron, wrought iron fence. This is wrought iron fence, and I just leap over it. I mean, I don't know because I've driven by it. That fence has got to be six feet tall. In just one movement, I was over that fence, and I just lay prone on the ground, spread my arms out, and just got close to the wall and just stayed there. And they drove by. Where did he go? Where did he go? Where did he go? And I'm just sitting there, and they drove by two times looking for me. I didn't know these guys barely saw who they were in the car because it was kind of like dusk car was but there was five or six black guys this black guys let me say that again not mexican not asian not indian not peruvian but motherfucking black guys i didn't fucking know never saw didn't say anything to it so it wasn't like i offended them and brought up the fucking you disrespected them I was walking on a public street home from my fucking job. So I'm laying there and I'm just breathing hard because the shit's a trip. It is a trip. And they drove and I'm there like 30 minutes and when I'm sure that they're gone, then uh, I get up and I go, I, I go home. edit this video. It was a totally 100% scary ass moment. Um, I went home. I was fucking shaking. Because I don't know what they had planned for me, but it wasn't good. Don't know them. And they just kept you know, like I said, it's like, where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where'd that motherfucker go? Where'd that motherfucker go? And I'm just sitting there like, why? I firmly believe today in my heart that if I had not taken off and ran, I would be a fucking statistic. 
by some people I didn't know, never saw before. And really, I looked for that car. Every time I saw the Impala, chills and shit would roll up my uh, spine because I didn't know who the fuck. I was like, okay, it's not the black one. Oh, the, I, if I saw that car today, I would know it. I would know that fucking car. I would know ex instantly that car. So every time Impala, I was like, okay, that wasn't it. But to live in that fear, this fear that was put in me by some people I didn't know, didn't do shit to, and that's what that's that's the core reason why I don't live the fucking hood. That is the core reason, you know. And the people are gonna go, well, you know, crime can happen anywhere. Uh, you're right, it can. But there is a propensity for shit to happen in certain zip codes more frequently than in other ones. A big ass tendency for a higher rate. Yeah, where I live, yeah, crime happens. Sure, it does. And it's fucking the lowest in the whole state of Georgia. Lowest crime rate in the whole state of Georgia. So, for all of you folks who are like, yeah, yeah, no, no. And another reason, I don't live in the hood. There is this collective, we can't fucking do better mentality because of the white man. Yeah, I said that shit. I got tired of hidden, hearing it. I've actually gotten away from people who've mentioned that shit. I don't have anyone in my circle of friends who says that bullshit. I hear it. I look at them side eyes and I was like, really? If I were to hear that, I'd be like, really? Because let's just chop it up. Racism exists. It does exist. But racism is not going to fucking stop me. And it's not going to stop any other black person that wants to do well. Will your road be as easy as that of a white person? Sometimes it will be, sometimes it won't be, depending on what you're doing. Things are not this, well, you know, you're black and you're fucked. No, it's not like that. And honestly, I can go to the Waffle House or I can go to whatever eating establishment and sit down and meet a stranger and have a fucking interesting ass conversation because a lot of the people that live around here actually do shit with their lives. And it's not saying that everyone in the hood isn't doing shit with them lives, but come on. A lot of people don't read books. A lot of people don't do certain things. Now, let's go with the town the 10th. Like, this group of people that are doing well and they should lead and uplift the other group. I would say before 1996 that energy was kind of on point I would say it was kind of on point we got to a point where education and attainment is not viewed with the esteem it once used to be in the black community and that's a huge problem and there's a lot of lip service paid to it but no it's, it's a huge problem so you've got that going on and the biggest thing is for me going back to that day that was coming home from work is you could be doing absolutely nothing and get your ass taken out in the hood you don't have to you know I wasn't at the wrong place at the wrong time I was coming home from work at the end of the day and some people riding around in an Impala who had nothing else to do wanted to fuck with me. Maybe they wanted to talk shit. Maybe they wanted to beat me up. Maybe they were going to shoot me. In my heart, with the fear that came up, the way that whole shit went down, I'm going to say statistic. That's what I believe, and you can't change my mind on that. And I've noticed that since I've lived in the hood, there's a certain mentality. Recently, Don Lemon said something, and people told the man a turncoat, and it's it's weird. He said something that Earl Nightingale put out in Lead the Field, that people in nicer neighborhoods, there's no trash on the ground. He put that out in the 50s. There's no trash on the ground. Perfectly manicured lawns. Don Lemon said something similar in 2013, and it's true. I went back where my old warehouse used to be recently and the stark difference because 
it, it kind of happens when you live in a nice place you work and play in a nice place when you go somewhere else the starkness of this place not being as nice as what you used to stands out and I was just like sitting in the parking lot because some friends had a Quiznos and unfortunately didn't make it because either they moved or went out of business I don't know and I was sitting in the parking lot and I was just like damn I mean trash was every fucking where straws cups I don't litter I walk and if I had you know I had a cup of some I've walked for an hour holding the cup because I wasn't gonna drop it on the ground because I just think that's just in poor taste but you know people look at that and go like that's no big deal that was no big deal now if you are at home all day and you ain't doing shit and there's trash on the ground it means you don't give a fuck how much I mean seriously how much time would it take for you to go outside and pick up the trash in front of your house if you don't have a job I mean, seriously, if you don't have a job, you're not working, your neighborhood should be fucking beautiful. But it's not. Because people don't give a fuck. And let's talk another reason why I don't live in the hood. You have people who've built very nice, upscale communities in the hood. And they've created like a, a subdivision or a block, and it's really nice. Hood energy is dominant energy. I've seen it too many times. You'll see it, it'll start off, and you will have that spot. And what'll happen is some person who is the smart one in the family that's gone out and done things and they bought a nice house, they will bring folks in helping them out, and they will do that hood shit in a nice neighborhood. When I lived in the East Lake, which was my last time living in a gentrification type neighborhood. There were a lot of older black people that did the right thing, worked hard, bought houses, and their family members were the ones creating the crime. I mean, neighbor and I, we talked about it. It was like one kid, we knew he was doing shit, just couldn't catch it. Wasn't going to school, appeared to be about 18, just doing shit. Living off his grandmother. Not helping her, but fucking living off. I know, I saw the situation. And you look at that shit. Why? Why? Fucking why? And then the thing you hear is uh, they don't have fathers. That's that's the big thing. They don't have fathers in the home. Bill Clinton didn't have a father in the home. He became motherfucking president. So I didn't have a father in the home and I didn't do that shit. It's the person. If you're a kid, 8, 9, 10 years old, and you're doing dumb shit, okay, you're a kid. You get 15, 16, 17, that argument starts to lose a lot of merit because you know you're fucking up. You just don't give a fuck. And that's the thing. Recently, I woke up this morning and I saw something that was really atrocious. I don't know because I will probably do a video on it once I get some more information because it appears that this young man shot a baby and just the you know how the the news tends to sensationalize things so i don't know how true that is until i do a little bit more research but i was like how do you shoot a baby in a stroller how do you do that what kind of animal does that so like i said i don't know i'm gonna want to do a little bit more research because a lot of times what you see in the news immediately it may not be the case but I will share another case with you that is atrocious. Uh, it happened in Oklahoma. This guy, an Australian student, uh, exchange student, he was running. Minding his own business. Running. Three kids saw him run by and decided to get a rifle and follow him and shoot him. And I'm reading an article. And every black person that grew up that has some sense, watching the news is a preoccupation in, oh, fuck, please, no. A crime happens, something goes down, and then you're waiting till they get to the perpetrator. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I fucking cheered when it was like, oh, fuck, it's another black guy. Thank God. And I'm reading this article, and I'm just like, okay. Shooting the guy that's running. The robbery wasn't the motive. And it's two black guys and the white guy. And people are like, well, why race shouldn't matter. And you know what? It shouldn't. 
but for some reason people buy into what they should do because of the color of their skin if I'm black I should act this way a lot of people buy into that bullshit and there's a huge fucking gangster criminal culture that happens with a lot of black people it's like cool and shit now, see, I never got in that club because I've always been a nerd. So I never got in. And I think that's probably one of the best things that ever happened to me. Because I saw people who were smart and intelligent try to act thug and hoodish in school so they could fit in with that popular crowd. And which is just fucking insipid and stupid. But people will do what they want to do. But those are some of the reasons that I don't live in a fucking hood. Don't plan on it. And one of the reasons I continue to work, work hard to stay the fuck out of the hood. And this is something else I've noticed. A lot of people, they may not do a video. They may never ever say these things. When they're with people, they may nod their head and agree. And then they'll go out and get in their car and go into a, go home to a neighborhood that's not in the fucking hood. They, they agree with me in action because they're just not going to do it just not going to do it. I used to have some grandiose dreams of getting a bunch of money, going back, redeveloping, you know, a neighborhood block by block because of the beautiful architecture. And as I became a little older and a little wiser, I realized it wasn't so much a money problem as it was a desire and attitude problem. Money is not the issue. If people in those neighborhoods band together, got together, had a civic meeting and said, look, there's a hundred of us. What we're going to do, everybody's going to contribute, say, a hundred bucks to this pot. And then we're going to fix up Miss Jones' house. And after we get her house fixed up, then we're going to do it again. And we're going to, and you just build, no, 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 that ain't happening. That is not happening. That is just not going to happen because people don't have that within them. It's just not going to happen. And that's what would change virtually every hood if the people in the hood actually said we don't like it we're going because the thing is you have to have the knowledge and the information and the action like people are looking for outside money when the money's there the money's there it's just there's a lot of people who make money from hoods being hoods black and white they make money from the hood because that's how check cashing stores stayed in business for so long because people didn't have a financial education to realize your ass needs a checking account you know, people, I heard people say, I can't handle checking accounts. I write check. Learn, bitch. You know, about, I was, I was just, I've heard all kind of reasons for not having a checking account or a credit card and just being outside of the financial system that we have, which will bitch slap you if you don't understand it. And I was just like, wow, wow. But yeah, I had a whole bunch of ideals that I have, uh, they were proven to me to be false because they were based on the formula in my head with little regard to the fact that people are going to do what people are going to do. It has nothing to do with money. It has everything to do with mindset. And if you don't have the right mindset, you can pour all the money in the world into the hood and it's not going to get any better. It's just not. There's been a lot of evidence of that because there are people who've done just that they put money in the hood didn't get better until the mindsets of the people in the hood change the hood will not change it's not going to get better it's not going to be lovely there will be no tea cakes and parties and it's just going to get worse and then here's another issue that happens when people who see low property values i.e two white gay men come in and fix up the house and then they say hey hey, you know, this is a great hour for the gay guys, and they put out the alert, then they get some more gay guys to come in, and they do the work, and they build up the neighborhood, and they raise the property value, then all of a sudden, the people who were there who could have did the same exact shit start gay bashing and saying, it's the homosexuals messing up the hood. They're pushing up the property values, and they're forcing the older... No, they're not. They're not forcing anything. They're taking advantage of a situation that was there before they arrived that the black people in the same fucking neighborhood could have did the same shit but wasn't thinking like that because so many black people are waiting for someone to give them shit. 
And that's the thing, because I've seen it, and I've seen the conversations, like, yeah, the white guys, the gay guys come in, and they, they, no, they see opportunity. I lived in the neighborhood like that. I went to the community meetings, and I talked to these people, and I got to know them. And that's just like, wow, you come in, you get this house with 40000 you put 30000 maybe $40,000 worth of work in it, then a few years, a few years later, you flip it for $250,000. I, I, excuse me, that's just fucking smart. I don't call that racist. <laughs> I call that smart. And once again, that opportunity was there before they arrived. Now this one's like, well, they got they got the money. Going back to the original part of this video, if the people in the neighborhood got together and decided to truly have a community and decided to truly help each other, the money's there. Wouldn't even need a bank. Wouldn't even need a bank. But the thing is, a lot of people can't stand the fact that someone's going to do better than them or live a little nicer or have a... No, 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 Not fucking going to happen. And that's another reason, those attitudes. When I started my transformation of going from a loser mindset to an entitled mindset to what I call a bitch-ass mindset to one of... I am in control of my life. I start making better decisions. I'm going to have a better life. Guess what? My life improved. And I'm black. And I'm not just black. I am real dark brown. And I lift weights. And I'm huge. I'm the, you know, I'm purportedly the black boogeyman. I'll tell you another little story. And this happened roughly around the same point. I had a post office box close to my old address because, you know, I was living like a fucking nomad during those times. I didn't know where I was going to be, so I needed a place for my correspondence to come to me that wasn't going to shift. So I had a post office box. And I remember going to check my post office box, and this was before I lost my car. I drove up, and there was this um, grungy-looking guy just by the post office. I don't know why he was standing. He was just standing there. He looked kind of rough. And there was this white woman in a car next to me as I pulled up. I got out, and she abruptly gets out of her car. I'm coming from work. I'm in scrubs. So I know the connotation that brings. So she gets out, and then we get in the post office. She says, I'm so glad you showed up. That white guy scared me. And I was puzzled for about a good hour after that, that I had to call it some sort of, man, you just won't, you will not guess what the fuck just happened. And this, this, this was long before Obama. This was essentially what it's saying is if you look like a respectable person, you will be treated like a respectable person. If you look like a grungy person, you'll be treated like a grungy person. Because she was glad that I showed up, the black guy, because the white guy was scaring her. Shit, true story fucking true story shit still cracks me up so being the person that i am i've kind of looked at some stuff because you you'll have people say that shit hasn't changed shit's changed it's just a lot of people refuse to accept change and they want to live in prisons of their own misery there will be a lot more videos like this <laughs> i got a lot to say pent up angst it's coming out but that's it for now and this is glendon and i'll see you on the good side you want to change your mindset, you want to get out of that fucked up mindset of, you know, being a victim, check out my audio book, The Hustler's Mindset, Pimping Your Mind for Success. Hit that, tap that green bar, and you can make it happen today. Instant download. You should do it. Really, you should. You really should do it. I'm telling you, you should do it. For real, you should do it. Today business school is in session learn how to make money increase your wealth one of the biggest problems i have is that people come to the youtube channel they'll see me and they want to get some but they don't know where to start so i have solved that problem today if you're brand new welcome we're glad to have you look forward to serving you a long, long time. If you want to get this knowledge, if you want to start a business, 
I have created a blueprint, a roadway for you to actually start making changes in your life. Because this is one of the things that I have learned. When I was doing 30 days to 2,500, I learned that there were some people who did better than others. And I was like, why are these people doing better than other people? What's going on with these people? And what I have discovered, and let's see. Let me go ahead and hit that. What I've discovered is that people who came in with a business already, they did really well with 30 days to 2,500. Remarkably well. It was like mind blowing for some of them. Then there were people who didn't do well. And these were people who did not have a strong mindset or were not in business. So what I've des designed is for you to go through this pathway because essentially when I get someone who's brand new to the channel and they've never had a business, there is so much work that has to be done. I mean, I know there's folks on the internet that makes owning the business, running the business look super easy and it's not. And it's one of the most complicated things that you will do in your life. But once again, people want the path of least resistance. That is not what we're going to have. So we're going to go here and we're going to go under. All right. So this is where you start. This is the uh, blueprint. First thing you're going to do is get the hustler's mindset, pimping your mind for success. That's your free audio book. That's where you're going to start getting that mind correct. Then you're going to move to this money management is the basics of finance and wealth development. Before you get new money, you must optimize the money you already have. If you, as it was said in the part of the live stream this morning, if you don't manage a little bit of money, well, you're not going to manage a lot of money. Well, it's the same person. The only thing that changes is the money. Look at the number of athletes who go broke. Because they've never learned how to manage money. They never learned how to compartmentalize, how to do the five checking account blueprint. They've not done that. So this is the, the first course you need. And I keep telling everybody that. I've had a lot of people who take this course and they book the console because they wanted to know more. So this is the course that you need. Then after that. We're going to go to the third course. Becoming the boss. You have to make this mental shift about being into a producer mode. So this is the third course you'll take. And one of the things that I've done is I've priced this stuff so well that, you know, there, there is a few of you who are kind of sitting back, who are emailing me like, hey, I want to buy these courses. What's the best price you can give me? That never works. Those deals never materialize because they were required for me to sit on email and go back and forth with people all day. And it just typically doesn't work out. Uh, the courses are so economical. All right. This is what you're going to get after becoming the boss. This will be your fourth course. Uh, the Power of Six Productivity course. This course will help you get stuff done. This is a habit that you need to develop, how to manage your time, how to get stuff done. When you start a business, there's going to be so many things to do that this course will help you learn how to get stuff done, how to what's a priority, what's not priority. This course will do it for you. All right. So the fifth course you will get scripted days. This is a life changing course. I think it's too cheap, but I want you guys to benefit. It will give you the power of written manifestation. 
it will straighten out your uh, bad habits. It will put you on the path of productive success. It will teach you how to, you know, set up a morning ritual, set up an evening ritual, a lot of things. This will be the fifth course. Now, these five courses in the free audio book will build a foundation. When I was doing 30 Days to 2500, I had some students do amazingly well, and some students struggled. The people who did well already had A, a business, or B, a superior mindset. The foundational courses will give you the superior mindset. Let's say you're a person who wants to start a business but have no clue to where to start. This next section is for you. Typically, business success comes from practicing business skills. One of the best ways to do that is by reselling. You got to get your feet wet. This is where you will start with the reselling courses. Uh, this is a collection that gives you the storage auction book, the pimping Craigslist stuff, all of this stuff to get you geared for resell. How to have a great garage sale, all that. Now, once you've gotten the first five courses, your next move will be 30 days to 2,500. This course is for people who need to learn how to sell and how to sell and set up business. It will be thought provoking. This is also a good course for people with established businesses. Remember how I told you the people who had already businesses did extremely well. So go ahead. You know, if you have a business owner, if you go through because 30 days to 2,500 is a long course. It's going to take you about two months to go through it, but it'll be well worth it because in these two months, you're going to learn stuff. It's going to open up your eyes. It's going to create new shifts in how you think and how you do business. All right. Uh, the seventh course will be asking for the money, how to be an Uber salesperson. Now, don't get this course unless you have something to sell. Just reading a book or reading a book about sales without having something to sell is a waste of time. You need to actually read about it and put this stuff into practice. And once again, uh, for all you folks who keep asking me about the Luponics book, I don't know the name. Can't remember the name of it. All I know is it had a red and black cover. Can't help you. People keep like, man, it sounds dope. What's the name? I don't know the name, man. I don't know the name. Just had to put that out there. All right. And for the business owners, this will be defined as people making money and paying their bills with the proceeds from the business. You know, if you got like a side business or something, and this might be for you, but this is for the business owners. You should get the art of holding on how to set up your legal structure. Structure. If you're a business owner making money, you are a target and you will need to protect yourself. Now, for the people who want to save some money, I have a curated bundle with all the courses except the art of holding to get you started and get your business aspirations. So this is the bundle that includes most of the courses. There you go. So if you are new to the channel and you're like, hey, where do I start? That's the pathway. That's the pathway to get started because from a foundational standpoint, you need to establish the foundation before you get off into trying to start your business. Because like I said, you know, I, I got a ton of feedback from 30 days to 2,500. And if I had been thinking, I would have did this like way sooner, but essentially taking those lessons derived from that course, you got people who are not mentally prepared to start a business. It's, it doesn't mean that they can't become mentally prepared. It's just a process. It's going to take them a little time to, you know, like you got kids. All kids don't learn at the same rate. You got some kids who learn slower, and but they can still get there. And essentially, this is what you will be going through with the foundational courses. They will help you get your mind right. This will help you get your mind right. The DSL Chronicles, hell yeah, they ain't going to buy people. I mean, seriously, I, I, I pretty much ignore those folks because I've been down that path before. Typically, the people who are like, I want this course, I want this course, I want this course. 
and who want to talk to me, uh, the number one reason that people want to talk to me is to get permission to do what they think they want to do. This like, well, if Glendon thinks this is cool. No, you, you need to give yourself permission. You need to validate yourself. You need to um, believe in yourself. Mike Ellie, this ain't no theory. This ain't no theory, man. These courses have come from my business experience. There is no theory here. Let's see. Anthony Johnson, me and my cousin got busy today. We had a hard time starting our generator. It wouldn't start for our mobile watch, but we strung it together. Made a hundred bucks for a few hours. See, once you go through this transformation, once you get that first good sale, that first load of money, it becomes addictive. It becomes very addictive. Now, what I'm going to do for the, you know, starting next week, there's going to be a lot of new training. So I'm going to do a video probably Sunday or Monday talking about the new training and how you can get a hold of that. Now, if you have never started a business, this stuff is good for you, especially 30 days to 2,500. And the money management course, I've heard, got a lot of feedback from that. People like it. It has helped them manage their finances because here's the thing. If you go ahead and start making a lot of money with your bad money management habits right now, it's the money's just, you're not going to get the best use of the money. You, you need to learn how to hold on to money. And this is what the course teaches you. So, you know, next week we will get into um, the, the new stuff. But the new stuff will build on this. It won't be the same information. It'll be new information and more of it for business owners. I don't really have a lot of courses for business owners other than the art of holding maybe 30 days to 2500 and asking for the sale those only courses for business owners uh, a lot of this stuff is side hustle stuff uh beginning business person so once again just go ahead you know if you're brand new to the channel you just found this welcome thank you appreciate you um this is what we're going to do. Michael Gardner. So it's true. This guy I'm working for in real estate made like 15 K and spent it all. People that thirst, you know, that, that, that thirst is a big, big problem. That build up thirst of you wanting stuff. You want to live a certain lifestyle. Once again, the money management course will help you with that. Let's see where we are. Cool. Because what uh, this is going to be a very short live stream because I'm going to take it down and I'm going to put it at the end of all the newer videos. So people who are coming into the fold, you know, the new folks, because I got a lot of new folks. I get, you know, emails and stuff like, hey, Glendon. Man, I'm really excited. I like what you're saying. But where do I start? This is where you start. Okay. So all of the information is below. You can start with your first five foundational courses. Then start going wild on the other stuff. And very soon I will have some new information that will build on these principles that will take you to the next level. So with that, I will see you guys later.